What's up guys? We are here today under the hood of a 2005 Jeep Liberty and this is pretty much the same as any other Liberty. It's a 3.7 liter V6 and this particular vehicle has a belt noise or I should say pulley noise uh, coming from the alternator and so we're going to go ahead and replace the alternator today and I had diagnosed this probably four or five months ago and I haven't seen the car since. Uh, I also have not heard the car. The car was dropped off last night. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up and see if we can confirm that noise from the alternator and then we'll hurry up and see if we can change it in under 10 minutes. So I'll go ahead and start it up here. So the noise does change as it runs a little bit longer, but you can hear kind of a grindy, rattly pulley. Uh, and what it is is bad bearings in this alternator. Um, I'll show you a couple ways to diagnose that if you're trying to figure that out for yourself. Um, one thing is that this vehicle has a new water pump and a new power steering pump. So the only other possibilities are AC compressor, and then the idler pulley or tensioner pulley. And one way to test or rule out your AC compressor is start the car up, turn the AC on and off, and with that extra load on or off the engine, you can see if your noise changes. And if it doesn't change, you've pretty much ruled out your AC compressor. For your power steering pump, to diagnose a noise there, you can again start it up and then turn the wheel left and right put a little bit of load on that power steering pump and if your noise does not change you ruled that out. Um, as far as a little bit more in-depth way to diagnose a noise, one thing I like to do is take a long screwdriver and actually touch it to my ear and then touch around to the different pulleys. Uh, be careful with it running, you don't want to hurt yourself, but just touch the item. So if I touch the alternator and then compare that to if I touch the AC compressor with that screwdriver up to my ear, if the noise is a lot louder or different between the two, I can narrow it down that way as well. So anyway, we have it narrowed down to the alternator, so we're going to go ahead and start the repair. I'm going to start with a 15 millimeter socket on the tensioner pulley here on the uh, far passenger side, the left side relieve the tension on the belt, and then slide it off of the smooth water pump pulley, just like that. And I'll take a look at the video. We are about 3.30 into the video, so we'll try to be done by 13.30. Get our belt out of the way. Next thing we want to do is with a 10 millimeter, which I'll grab quick, we need to unhook our negative battery cable. So I'm going to run and grab that a second. Alright, so right underneath you guys here. Oh, and that is... That has been replaced. It's not a 10 on the negative on this vehicle. Must be a... 7 sixteenths or 11. We'll try our 7 sixteenths. Yep, that'll work. Here, I'll hold you back a little bit so you can watch. Alright, we're just going to loosen our negative battery, pull that off. Next, we'll take off our 
little clip here on top of the alternator by squeezing the connector, move it out of the way. Looks like that's going to be a half or a 13. Carefully take that off. Probably going to break something here. Nope. All right, we've got that off. And then finally, we're gonna squeeze this connector on the rear of the alternator and pull that off. I'll set you guys back up here. One thing about this alternator, there are two different designs for this vehicle. One of them is with the clutch and one is without. One way to tell if you do have a clutch is you'll have a cap on the end of your pulley, this plastic cap. This one does have, uh, I think it's called an overrunning clutch. So, anyway, uh, I've got the new alternator here. Let's continue with the repair. So we're gonna take a half or 13 once again for this rear bolt. Got that. And then I think we're looking at a 15. Just confirm that. Yep. Our other two bolts are a 15. So I'll get this one out. One 15 out. And the other one directly across from it. Trying not to knock you guys over here. Okay, next we're going to try to pull the alternator out. There's a good chance it's going to be stuck pretty good. That happens to me frequently. In which case you can use a pretty beefy flat screwdriver or a pry bar to get it out and I'll show you that if needed. Oh we might get lucky here. So it looks like if you pull up towards the driver side first then you can just kind of wiggle it here it comes Just trying not to bust my knuckles here. There we go. Pull it out. Take our new alternator. And I guess you can go ahead and compare just to be sure, but if you'll notice on this new one, it has that plastic cap once again, just like our old one with the clutch. So we do have the correct alternator here. Okay, we're gonna lower that in place. And then in no particular order, get the bolts started again. You'll have your 13 millimeter or half inch at the back, your shorter 15 millimeter on the right, and the longer 15 millimeter on the left. Looks like we got about four minutes left to beat our estimated time. I had a customer ask me once when they uh, had dropped their car off for all four shocks, I think it was. Dropped it off, uh, let's just say nine in the morning. I called them at 11 or noon or whatever it was, said it was ready. And they came and got it, I gave them their bill, and the book time on it was 
just for example, five or six. It was quite a bit more than what it actually took. And the customer asked me, why are you charging me for five or six or whatever hours when it only took you three? And uh, I had to explain to him that that's the way mechanics or repairmen or anything make money is by being ahead of the book time. And he kind of tried to say, well, you're making money even at the book time. I'm still going to pay you whatever. Um, so why are you charging me more? And I said, well, what's the point of me kind of being skilled and being fast at what I'm doing by being experienced? Why not just lollygag around and get way behind in my work and have tons of cars piled up? Because that's kind of the point is getting ahead on the book time to actually make yourself money. Basically, the book time is to cover expenses is the way I explained it. So anyway, like with this job, if we're going to get this done in 10 minutes. I would bet it pays an hour or an hour and a half. It's not a ripoff, and especially in your guys' case, you're going to hopefully do this repair yourself. But it's just a, kind of a trick of the trade is being quicker and more knowledgeable to get something done quickly and uh, actually start making money that way. All right, so we got our three bolts tightened down. We'll go ahead and in the reverse order of what we did, reconnect our clip there, make sure it snapped into place, reconnect our power wire here, and it looks like they slightly changed the size on this. A half might still work but it looks like it's slightly smaller on the new one. And just kind of common sense torque on that one. Um, it's a gentle bolt, so you don't want to snap that off by going too crazy. All right, snap our connector on there, and then finally we need to put our belt back on. And in my case, and hopefully in yours, there's a belt routing diagram right in front of me here on the upper radiator support but I'll just kind of explain it here in case you don't have that so we're gonna go down and around the crank then up to the left up and over the idler down and around the tensioner up and over the AC down and around the water pump back up and over the alternator and then finally We'll go around the power steering once we relieve our uh, tensioner here. So we're going to switch back to that 15. And I'm actually going to try to use a wrench, see if I can make that happen. Nope. Let me switch back to this 15 here. relieve the tension and then what I like to do is before you let go on your wrench and let the tensioner take over just kind of eyeball all your pulleys and get everything in place that way you're not putting tension on the belt in the wrong spot to cause any sort of possible damage okay looks like we're back on now we will reconnect the battery. Looks like we're at 14 minutes. So about 30 seconds behind my estimate. Take our 7 16 I think it was. Try to flip my ratchet one-handed. There we go. Again, just kind of common sense torque on that one. Get the box out of the way and I'll set you up. We'll fire it up and see if our noise is gone. And I don't know if that noise showed up on the video or not. Hope it did, but if not, you'll just have to trust me. This battery is so slippery with armor all, can't even get my tripod to stand up. Very 
very slight rattle, which I'm going to say is valve train somewhere, but that grindy, scrapey noise is gone. So that's a confirmed repair. All right. Hopefully you guys found the video helpful. And uh, let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, like, make sure to subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.